Hey, Fast Trackers. This is a quick tutorial on how to press your winners without exception. Most important is to learn how to practice it, okay? So uh, don't forget the disclaimer uh, is in front of everything we do in Fast Track. I'm not going to read it, but you all know that it's there. All right, so uh, the first thing you do is you go to a 240 chart and you get all your lines on there, okay? So now what you have is you have what they actually did, all right? So you know what they did, and to practice it, you gotta go back and see how would I have entered had I uh, had I seen this ahead of time, all right? So the 240 view has the, uh, we're in an uptrend, and I've identified the wide open spaces for you. Those are these little red boxes here. So you can see the opportunities and where they are and how they did it, okay? So next thing, obviously, is to go down to the 60-minute chart. Now here I want you to see typically, uh, totally how the market respected all the lines TFPD that we normally do. So once again, this equals a wide open space. So you can see here's a wide open space right in here. All right? So you see there's a target right there. There's a target right there. There's a target right here that they blew right on through. Okay, And there was a target right here off the bottom. All right? when, then you got a sideways move, and then there's a target here, a target here, and a target here. Then we got a little pullback, and we up through it. Well, as soon as we blew through the targets, where do we go? Up to the fib, and then up to the target. Then we pulled back again. This time we went directly up to the target. So what you now know is that if the targets are on there and you've identified them, the market probably has identified them also. Okay, so we uh, we want to be able to see both the 240 view and the 60 view. All right. Now, once you've ascertained that the market uh, did what you would have planned, which would have been a TFPD, the next job is to figure out how would I have traded that, pressing my winners every time I had a wide open space. So now I'm going to take each one of those wide open spaces and I'm going to show you how the market showed us. Uh, how to trade it. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is we have to agree that we will press our winners without exception. All right. That means in every single trade, there's going to be at least two plus trades every time you make a trade. All right. So uh, as you can see right here, when uh, we had a pullback right here, right there, and up we go, and we have taken out this sideways move right here, all right? So there's your first opportunity. You got an arrow and painted candle. Now, fast trackers don't need an arrow and painted candle, but it sure showed you that momentum came in there. The question you got to always ask yourself is, why did momentum come in here? It came in there because they took the slope out, the slope, uh, single line, trend line, all right? All right. So then they took out this top here. You can all see the break hook and go here. I could have added on that break hook and go for the target. All right. Then we get a pullback. We get a pullback all the way to the 618 fib. And you see exactly what they did. They instantaneously added a buy. They close in reverse automatically. Now remember, this target's already hit. So now we're going to this target. All right. What did it do? It went right there. All right, see that? Now, on the break of that target, all right, we have two targets up here. You got one here and you got one here. So we could have added a position here and we could not have added a position here because it's just a little too small. So but we've still got two positions in that place right there. So in those two wide open spaces there, you can see you got one, two, three, four. A minimum of four trades on in those two wide open spaces. Two on each wide open space, all right? So now we'll go to the next wide open space, all right? So remember, the pullback is your friend. So as soon as you get a pullback, you're all over this thing, all right? So what ended up happening here? Let me just draw this sideways market here. And you can see on the pullback here and the close and reverse, an aggressive trader would have gotten that. I'm not telling you that you needed to get that, but it was there for the more aggressive trader. However, when they went up to the FIB and retraced back here to this FIB right here, that gave you an opportunity right there. And of course, you know, if you get a retracement, you're going to the 618 FIB. I'm not trying to complicate this thing at all. I'm just trying to show you based on uh, what the market was doing, uh, uh, how you could have entered multiples, right? So then on the break of this, of this FIB to the upside, on the, on the next candle right up here, notice that we got a break, a hook, and a go, right? So that could have been another place to enter a position. As soon as you took the barrier out right here and you got, uh, you, you could have added a position there for that target right there, the upside. When it came back here, possibly you could have got that one, okay? But well, I'm not even gonna count it, all right? But no matter what, when you got a break of this one right here and you get a break, hook, and go, you could have made that trade right there. So in, in this trade right here, there were uh, a one, two, three, four opportunities, possibly five and possibly six. All right. All right. Then uh, this. Uh, oh, sorry, got the wrong one. Let me go to the next slide. Somehow or another, I got an extra slide in there, upside down. Don't want to have that. 
All right, so here we go on this one right here. And uh, uh, you can see here that on the move to the upside, all right, we, we had a, an opportunity to pull back as my friend. It pulls back. I got a break, a hook, and a go. All right, so if I, if I miss the first one, I still got the opportunity for the second one. Let's say I miss both of those, no matter what, on this next move up when you got a break, hook, and go here. You should have traded it up to there, all right? So at least one, maybe three in there, all right? Then they pull back here, and you can see that would be a 50% fib. So you could have taken that one also. I didn't count that one, but you could have gotten that one. And then we got a nice big pullback. Now the pullback is my friend because we're in an uptrend. I know the pullback is doing nothing more than going down to find buyers, all right? Set of twins right here. How could we have done on a set of twins? You can see exactly what they did on the set of twins. They entered immediately, okay? So then what ended up happening? Then they put in a pole. So you can see the pole right there, all right? So on the break of the pole right in here, you could have added a trade, all right? If your stop was here, you obviously could have made that trade, all right? If not, maybe you wait for it to come down and on the up thrust, you take it again up to here, up to here. Now they didn't make it to the target here. So what do they got to do? They got to pull it back, do an A, B, C retracement. The pullback is my friend, back to the bottom and up we go. And this time we go to the target, all right? So that's really kind of simple. It, you know, I might spend a time watching this a couple of times and then uh, go into the charts and draw your own. Go back in the past, look at a trending move. Remember, these are trending moves. This isn't trading in a box. This isn't reversing, none of that sort of stuff. There's no, they're not dealing with that. We're in a trending move. Therefore, we're just simply seeing how we can recognize the market and recognize where we should be looking for a trade so that we can press our winners without exception. All right. That was a 450 pip move. Uh, if you count all the slides. And as you can see, you could have made tons and tons and tons of pips in that 450 pips. All right. Hope that helps you. We'll talk with you soon.